What is good? We're back. We got full tripod and an arm sticking in there. So we're quad pod, but Jay Wayne's got some editing to do. So we are going full on tripod. We got Big Co in the house. We got Matt Foreman in the house. Going to have some fun. We got a startup Superflex tight end premium mock back into startup season. So excited for that. Haven't done a ton of these. We've done some with the patrons, but basically we're going to take you with us on how, how and when we're figuring out when and where to take guys. Really, like this is our kind of our first go at it. So we wanted to take you along with us. And, you know, while we figure out the process of where the value is and, and who we like where and where we feel like we can pass up on guys and all that kind of good stuff that you do in startups. So we got Superflex tight end premium um about 16 rounds here um so we'll take you through we got us four in there and then the patrons um good 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 exercise here first one that haven't really done too many of these uh so uh, we did one with mason dodds uh, a couple weeks ago but that was mostly just you know to get talking and uh wasn't quite like this one where we weren't as focused on the picks at hand, mostly just kind of using it as a springboard to have conversation. So we'll do a little bit of that today and figure out, you know, kind of what we liked and what we didn't like in this one. Certainly some some auto picks in here, but uh, we can talk through all that kind of stuff and we'll see how far we get. Sounds good. Yeah, man. Definitely a couple auto picks, but uh, like I said, good uh, good exercise. All right. Well, let's get let's get it rolling here. We got Josh Allen, one one. We got Patrick Mahomes, 1-2. We got Justin Herbert, 1-3. I'm in the 1-3 hole. Jay Wayne's in the 1-1, one, one, in the 1 hole. Uh, then we got Jamar Chase at 1-4. Then we got 1-5, uh, Matt Foreman over here. And then we got Kyler Murray at the 1-6. Uh, Jonathan Taylor at the 1-7. Justin Jefferson at the 1-8. Lamar Jackson at the 1-9. Pitts, this is tight end premium, at the 110. Dak Prescott for Big Co. at the 111. I don't believe that was auto for you. Nope. And then CeeDee Lamb at 112 to round out the first round. So let's uh, kind of walk through this round here. And pretty, no, no real problems anywhere at all. For any, You guys feel any type of way that you would really take somebody over somebody else here? Like, I mean, I feel like. If the second round early in the two, you know, I, I, last time we did one of these, I was in the front. So I was where Jay Wayne was. And mm -hmm. uh, I feel like the end of the first, the pick, you know, Dak wasn't as much fun as, say, a Patrick Mahomes or a Josh Allen. To, sure. You know, you, you understand that going in. You know, I'm in the back. I don't get one of those top guys that's the most fun. Dak wasn't as much, as much fun, but it, I feel like I just – it was him or Deshaun Watson. I actually, when I took him, I was thinking maybe I'd take Deshaun Watson, you know, Dak and, and Watson back to back there at, the, at that turn and just have two quarterbacks and get them out of the way. Watson didn't make it back to me, but it was like I just, I felt like, I mean, I didn't want the quarterbacks to run away from me. And Pitts was gone. Justin Jefferson was gone. Taylor's gone. So you got the top, the most three, top three guys, obviously Jamar Chase as well. But I mean, you could flip a coin on him or Justin Jefferson. Uh, I'm taking Dak just didn't feel fantastic. I just feel like yeah. I, ha I had to do it. I that just had to be my follow-up question. You still feel good about Dak in the first round. I mean, if you want to say 2-2 two -two semantics of getting him into the second round, sometimes we talk about this stuff and you're like, ah, I can't take him in that round. But the next round, even if it's just three picks away and it has the yeah. three in front of it instead of the two, yeah, you're like, sure. okay, that's a much better pick now. Well, um, well right. It, if if Watson's not suspended, maybe he's easily that spot in front oh, of that. Watson's, you know what I mean? If there isn't any problems with Watson, he's probably one of the first six picks off the board. Yeah, Could, I agree. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I think Watson's even questionable at two one. Yeah, I mean, I was pretty pretty into it there for for a minute and saying I don't really care. I don't really know what's going on right now. It makes me definitely ha like I would. I was interested in having those turn picks for that reason to try to get Deshaun Watson in in the early second there, but now. I was definitely a little sweatier taking Deshaun than previous, uh, like we did it with Mason. And I was kind of around the same area here. And I said, yeah, I feel good about it. I mean, you get a year suspension for Watson, and I'm still okay with, with a second-round pick on him because he's still fairly young, and I still think he's going to be just fine. But 
you know, I don't know exactly what's going to happen now, but that we'll let that play out. There's nothing we can. Yeah, really... that's a, that's a monster punt for your team. You right. know, just it's, it's just like saying, hey, my the best one of my best players, my second best player on my team, tore his ACL. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously you don't have you're not coming back from injury, but same idea. You get nothing from them. That's like Matt said. It's it's a big punt. So is there? I, a, go ahead. I I don't know if I can do pits at one ten, even in tight really? premium. It's just. It's too much. It's too much. I'm not paying that. I'm not paying that much for a tight end in the first round. I'm, I'm just, even in tight end premium, it's 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 too big of a gamble for a guy that we were hoping we're projecting on a on a bad team without a quarterback. I could do it. I can't do it. Do it. I can do it. I can do it easily. I can. I can. I'm okay. I, I feel like it's one of the safest assets you could have right now. Uh, I, I mean, I know, I know, like not having Matt Ryan and and uncertainty at the quarterback position moving forward is it definitely doesn't make you feel as great. I mean, anybody who doesn't have the rock solid quarterback position, you usually downplay a little bit. But Pitts is, I mean, I don't even know if he's twenty one yet. Like he, he's super young and 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 had one of the best rookie tight end seasons ever. Um, and I think Arthur Smith is. We don't. I don't know how long Arthur Smith's going to be there. Sure. I think if there's one thing that Arthur Smith can do, it's run an offense. It was the first year as a head coach. I'm not doubting. I'm, not, I'm not doubting Pitts. I shouldn't say. I shouldn't have said. I'm not. I I have no problem with Pitts's ability. It's just I'm not a big tight end guy. I just okay. don't see the. Posi- right. I, I get it. You're, I'm getting sure. you're getting a point and a half, but you're hoping that he can catch. You're hoping he catches 80, 90 balls. Right. You need the t- you need the volume. I think the Falcons are hoping he catches a ninety right. balls because yeah. they drafted him in the top five of the NFL draft. Uh, to me, like Casey said, you're drafting the asset, and if the asset peaks, then you're getting that. I mean, would we not all love to go back and take Travis Kelsey a lot earlier five years ago? Sure. You know that's all. That's what you're looking for in the tight end premium. It would change the game. I have no problems with you saying I'm just not going to be in the in the tight end that early. Yeah. You know, it's you got. I mean, don't you know. You got plenty. You got some options. The problem is the team, if you mess around and let the Travis Kelsey team that's been in all of your leagues, that's been in the playoffs and maybe making a deep run if he had two more good players in tight end premium. That's the thing. It's like if Pitts hits, then whoever drafted him better not hope that it's a Christian McCaffrey, well, yeah, Austin well, Eckler guy. Right. You know what I mean? Because you know you can find wide receivers. This yeah. dude's – and, and the, the interesting thing about this build, I, was I don't, yeah. don't want to run away from it. No, no. I, he, throws, he throws a guarantee in Tom Brady. He throws a QB3, uh, you know, top five quarterback on that team with Tom Brady. He throws a – uh, a Ryan Tannehill to Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan's going to be incredibly startable for a, a QB two. If Matt, Matt, I mean Ryan Tannehill probably doesn't run in as many co- touchdowns this year. You know he didn't last year. He kind of fell off a little bit. But with that, a Christian McCaffrey, Austin Eckler, Alvin Kamara, who has his own suspension looming. But you know this dude, the way I think the that way Kamara might have been an auto pick for him. But the way Megatron has picked his yeah. team here. If Kyle Pitts is hitting, I mean, like year one, it's an interesting build there as well. Like the, they got a couple of like three aging running backs in a row. So it's like those things might not line up exactly for Pitts's peak, you know, for his team. But by the time Pitts is, if Pitts turns into Kelsey, McCaffrey might be retired already. That You know what I mean? But that, yeah. if, if Pitts hits anywhere close to that peak earlier and McCaffrey and Eckler can hang on for another season, then that team's already hard to beat. Yeah, no, that, no the more I'm looking at his team, I mean – He's getting Sutton, Sutton Bate, Bateman, Robinson, McLaurin. I mean, yeah, maybe not, maybe not stuff that's super sexy, but I mean, those are all it, solid wide receivers. With Ertz two, too, maybe. Threes. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying bench pits in any format, but like with Ertz too, he could plug Ertz in. This man's making a title run. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, with Allen Robinson, if you know, Ertz is yeah. stroking. You know, you could flex if a, Ertz in a tight end premium. If a Rob, sure. if, right? If a Rob jumps back up with Stafford yeah. this year, and Cortland, I mean, you could. That's a solid team. It's a fun. It's a. It's just, yeah. Like you said, you need you need some things to go right for you there. But the 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 amount of points that is possible in a lineup for that team is aggressive. He'll I be mean. trading pits in two years for a quarterback. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. But for the next 24 months, he'll have a very fun team. Sure. Yeah. All right. So any other big problems in the first round? And we'll, we'll circle back to you know some more of that talk. Just like most drafts, you're probably not going to have any problems in the first round. Right. Yeah. I mean, every once in a while you see somebody reaching up. I mean, Lamb for some people in the first round might be 
a touch much. But yeah, but, I mean, yeah, but the players after him, I'd rather have Lamb than all of them. Yeah, I mean, I, I think maybe, I, I, I guess, I'd rather take Swift and and maybe still CMC, but what about and Najee? Not, not, yeah. yeah, I'd probably take all the running backs before okay. CD. I don't have too um, much of a problem with it though. No, I'm I'm still fine with Lamb. Like I, I'm not like some people are out on him. Yeah, a little bit, kind of fading on him, but. Uh, I could I could swap him down in that two four range and and move a couple guys up, but yeah, three four picks I'm not going to give yeah. you too much of a hard time about. Sure. All right. So then we'll move to the second round. That goes two one. We said Deshaun Watson. We kind of said a little bit about that. There's not a whole lot of you know use of beating a dead horse here. We don't know what's going to happen. Sure. I felt a lot more bullish about it. You know, three weeks ago when we did the Mason Dodds thing, or two weeks ago when we did that. Now I'm definitely a little bit more have have a slight bit of pause, but I mean it seems like you're probably gonna at least lose a year with Watson. We thinking a whole year. I'm thinking at least a year at this point. Dang. I mean, I mean, look what Trevor Bauer. Whole I mean, look what Trevor Bauer just got. Yeah. And that was for one. Yeah. Baseball is a little different than football. Sure, but. understand, understand. But still, I mean, well, like you said, let's just because there's so much guessing going on we'll just move on but no, if you said if you buyer said there, beware if you said there was a year attached to him would you take him in the second round being I'm, i'd probably get a couple more players off the board first but i i, I would if, well, let's maybe at the back of the round here we can yeah i mean even like you there, said he's still so young and he's paid it, it's full of guaranteed contract the entire there's there's something going around that the other teams no nobody wants to make a trade with the browns for anything because they're mad about the way they paid watson and screwed up the market i also um, heard that with these new with these new suits that they could possibly they could possibly throw out his contract hmm. and there's there's some voidable terms in there I, yeah I, I would assume the next but they they would it would be another contract a different one from the browns or another team it's not like all of a sudden he's not going to be yeah no you know, they didn't give him two hundred million guaranteed for nothing. Um, right. I'm, right. I'm still taking him. Yeah. Probably not at two one. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. I, I agree. Agreed. I'm still interested in taking him, regardless of the morality police. Um, you know, a costing that you'll get for it. Sure, but, I want him on my fantasy team. Right. I'm not asking yeah, him to I'm not playing that game. Give my wife a massage, or my wife give him a massage. However that goes. <laughs> Maybe she would want to. I don't know. I don't know, maybe, maybe so. All right, so you're up at two two here. Uh, let me I'll read all the. Let me read the second round. I feel like that's a nice way to go about it. We got Watson at two two one, two two Big Co with Cooper Cup, McCaffrey two three, Harris two four, Swift two five, uh, Mark Andrews two six. This is tight end premium. Uh, Russell Wilson two seven, Javante two eight, Trey Lance two nine, Brees Hall two ten. Excuse me, Trevor Lawrence two eleven, and Stafford two twelve. So, you basically had the closest to the first pick in this round, Big Co. You took Cup. I'd probably disagree with that pick. Um, what's, uh, was, that wasn't an auto, right? No, it wasn't. That, wasn't okay. that was an interesting spot because I'm sitting here thinking, obviously I want Christian McCaffrey. I still want the fantasy football points breaking machine like he breaks the game when he plays, mm -hmm. right? He play, he breaks the game. That's who I want on my team. But I'm like, you know what? It was literally, it was 18 minutes after, when I made that pick, it was 18 minutes after the news had dropped that Cup got the contract. He got a $75 million guaranteed. And I'm like, all right, what's more likely in the next two or three years, Cup stays healthy or the running back stays healthy? And I'm like, Cup broke fantasy football last year, but he did it from wide receiver position. So you didn't necessarily, even he, he can carry your team, but when the running back does that, he pushes your team. Right, so Christian McCaffrey will push you into the playoffs and he will push you to the championship game if he's out there breaking points records. Raw receivers usually they're not they're not that impactful, but Cup was a very impactful player, yeah. obviously. Okay. And I'm thinking I'm like, who who can I take here? Mostly that, because of the value that you got on Cup the, the previous year because you already had you two or three up. guys yes. that were scoring points. Hundred percent. Yeah. Now we're starting scratch, and he's my second player. My team's gonna be different. Right. Then if you started up last year, and I won the the fifty dollar Patreon league last year, I traded away Cup before the season started. Still won the mm. championship. A little humble brag, <laughs> but I wish I could. I would love to have that trade back for, for sure. sure right? Wish it was the two hundred fifty dollar league. Exactly. <laughs> but no, yeah, the hundred dollar league. My team is a, a scrub, worst team in the league. Um, um, so I'm just like, when I made that, I was like, what player can I draft here that gives me the best chance to win a championship? And 
obviously it's Christian McCaffrey, but I was like, all right, for the next three years, which player player gives me the best chance to win this championship? And I and I made my decision. I took Cup. And Norm, that's not I, – I would have taken Watson more than likely. I wasn't – you know, if Watson would have been there, I thought about taking Trey Lance because that's my – he's a, he's going to – he's a fantasy football points-breaking type player when it happens. And it may never actually happen like that, but he, go, he had one real start last year. It was a terrible game, and he scored 18 fantasy points. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's all you need to know about how it can work out for Trey Lance. Uh, I mean, he could crash and burn, but they've gave, given up so much for him. Uh, you know, we can get back to that, but that's – that's my. I was looking at a couple different things, and I just took Cup because he just had he just got paid, and I was like, all right, he's staying there. He's with Stafford. They've that's what they did in year one. Yeah, right? you know, I'm not saying that that'll happen again because Allen Robinson comes to town, but like, yeah, on on unlikely that the point total is where it was this year again. Sure, he, I, uh, that but, is the record but, for a reason. But, but sh- still, should be pretty good. Seems like you're paying. They're, they paid him for previous dues. Yes. And and you're paying the price in a startup for previous dues. Not that I think that he'll be a burden on your team by any means. I think he'll be just fine. Just seems like maybe you're paying, you know. Let me. See, I know way a lot to a lot of a lot of time for Cooper Cup, but he did earn this time last year on the field. So let me say one more thing before we get away, because I know we won't get back to him. I'm looking at Cooper Cup put up Antonio Brown numbers last year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Antonio Brown was breaking fantasy football for a couple years in a row. And if and Antonio Brown didn't Antonio Brown himself He'd out of this, still be. he would yeah. still be. Yeah. So I'm as I was making this pick and I'm like, am I really about to take Cooper Cup? I'm like, Cooper Cup's not going to Antonio Brown this thing up the next three years. No. So I was like, I'm actually going to take an old wide receiver much like Antonio Brown was 20, you know, 28 years old, he was getting selected like that because he looked like he was only getting better. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. he Antonio Browned himself. And the way Cup plays, and he's Cup's not, he's, not gonna he, do yeah, that. Yeah, he's I feel like with the way Cup plays, he's not gonna he he I mean he, he's not a speed guy per se, like a like a Hill yes. or a Marquis. Well he Brown. did blow his knee out a couple years ago, which was why he was cheap last year. Sure. You know, it can happen to anybody. It's just the Antonio Brown off the field part I'm talking no, about. No, no, yeah, you know? but what I'm saying is I, I, I think he'll age more gracefully than some other of your speed based wide receivers. Or the big guys like Jay Wayne's been talking about for years when the big guys fall down, there's a little bit yeah. different than the small guy. So I mean you're the um resident Rams fan here does that has that uh pick strike you I think it's I would rather have the running backs yeah agreed I'd probably take a handful of wide receivers in front of them too um I don't really mind him there with the other wide receivers per se I mean wow it was a while till the wide receivers went then he was the only wide receiver picked in the whole second round mm-hmm. it's crazy that is correct. Well, you know, quarterbacks and running backs dominate the top of the draft, and running backs always dominate. But maybe it's be interesting to see how far he would have fallen. And a lot of times in these mocks, I don't take the person I really would take mm-hmm. just to see what happens and this and that. But uh, that was just that spot, and I was like, you know, Jones and to be on the clock in a real draft and um, to really grind those gears. And it's hard to say if this was for a lot of money that I wouldn't have taken Christian McCaffrey. And But then if it doesn't work out with the running back, now you're – from a guy who spent a lot of time and money in startups in the last couple of years with the David Johnsons of the world and the Le'Veon Bells of the world, I'm like, you know what? I when they when they're right, nobody can beat you. Casey yeah. and I had a team that were was completely unstoppable with Le'Veon Bell in the middle of it, three of them actually, and we were completely unstoppable for two or three years. Yeah. But then when it's not right, you're like, man, how? What are we doing now? Yeah. And so it's like Cooper Cup was just for me just the safest twenty five points I could find. Yeah. yeah, I did. I kind of took that with my next three picks. I kind of took three, three big swings at it. And if yeah. they are, and if two of them hit, I'm pretty happy. And if all three of them hit, I'm gonna be really hard good. to beat. Yeah, yeah, hard to beat. All right, so then Cup, McCaffrey, Najee, Swift. I'd probably take Swift, Harris, McCaffrey. Uh, you know, probably in that order, somewhat as the next guys off the board in front of Lamb. I kind of talked about that already. Mark Andrews goes at two six. You had some problem with. Pitts problem with Andrews absolutely (laughs) absolutely I'd rather have Kittle anyways over Andrews okay fair enough yeah I mean I I can't necessarily argue with you outside of there's probably a little bit more volume for Andrews I mean probably not going to repeat what he did either last year Um, but he could you know he certainly could. They don't have any receivers to speak of, and no, um, they they, they, fought, they just they, added a bunch of tight ends. They force yeah, it. They, they force like it to seven. Them. Yeah. yeah, seems they, like maybe we're gonna get some twelve personnel out of the Ravens here. Yeah, 
Um, but Bateman, you know, probably still a little bit underappreciated in ADP wise. We'll and we see him. the backup plan for the Ravens just to just to tout Mark Andrews' value just a little bit there. Uh, you know, I'm yeah. not saying Huntley's going to be the backup this year, but the backup was throwing to Andrews too. Yeah. Right. You know, it's not like the backup came in and was like, oh, let me hit this third wide receiver over here. Third yeah. wide receiver's not even on the field. Yeah. Like yeah. I said, you know, there's one, all tight ends everywhere and Bateman. And so the, I, I, Mark Andrews is going to get yes. those targets week in and week out. It's Bateman, DeVernay, Tylen Wallace. They yeah. did. They were. Devin DuVernay. I, yeah. One of those, DuVernay, one of those games was a shootout that they actually came back to win. Um, later in this year when it was Lamar the was Colts hurt. Game. The it Colts game. Crazy game. But they just, they, they, with Lamar Jackson, they're always in the red zone. So Mark Andrews is always up for touchdown potential. And then when the backup comes in and he got hurt, Mark Andrews is still the focus of the offense. Yeah. And so I, I'm okay with, with Andrews there. I mean, I, I, I'm, I like Kittle and Andrews. So, I, I, it's I'm just not. It's just not the yeah, way I, do. I, I, I mean, understand. I mean, understood that I'm not looking at Andrews there either. Yeah, right there in the middle of the second round. I'm looking. I'm. I'm taking. I'm probably going to grab a quarterback. I'm. I'm probably we're, we're not looking to find a running back. I'm not looking at Andrews yeah. there, but I, I understand it. I'm much happier with the tight end that I took, who I feel that could be basically eighty to ninety percent of what Mark Andrews is, and I got him six rounds, five rounds later. Yeah. All right. So Andrews, you know, I'm. I'm fine with it. You guys. Maybe not so much. Russell Wilson goes next. Any? Uh, no. No? You're not into it? Or no, you, no, I'm fine no with problem. it. Completely fine with it. Yeah, no problem with that. Okay, Javante next. That's what I took. You, I'm, you hoping, I'm hoping that Broncos offense is going to be just a world Sans, beater. Sans, uh, Sans Melvin Gordon, he's, you know, yeah, I'm, that's second a one, or it's third. A one, it's a one-year thing. Second or third running back off the board. So, you know, still – you know, going to be a probably a viable option most yeah. weeks. And I'm thinking that hopefully in 2023 he would be more in the back end of the first round range. I'm hoping. Yeah. For his I mean, potential. he was in the, when we we were doing startup mocks in you know December January, and he was you know like one three one four. One, yeah, I mean sometimes. middle sometimes yeah. in the first. So it's yeah. it's not there. super flexible. I'll love take him. the I'll take the discount. Yeah. So you you took Javante. I, I can't necessarily argue with that. Then. Trey Lance goes, and you're. We, we talked to Mason. Mason Dodds, who we did the last startup with, was a big Mark Andrews fan, so he'd have been down with that pick. He loves that pick. He, he says, build your dynasty around him. Um, and then he's a big Trey Lance guy, so he was. He'd definitely be down with that pick. Any anybody, you got a problem with that pick? No, I was going back and forth between Javante and Trey. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're the forward the Niners, uh, the Niners guy. What I, I I said I'm I'm still a little scared to make that pick. There it just seems like so much. Equity in a in in an, in an unknown. I mean, but I took Brees Hall next, so I mean, yeah. Uh, but I I get it. No, like the the floor should be baked in there for even if he's not great, he's got the draft capital to give him plenty of opportunities, and he's got the legs, which we're, we've been waiting for that third dimension of the Shanahan offense, which is I think the reason that you traded all that equity to go do that because to get the running quarterback and just not like you already have so much trouble covering this offense mm -hmm. with Jimmy G at the helm and whomever you want to put out there at the running back position. I mean, and kind of the wide receiver position. I mean, I know Debo was great this year, but there's been times where Debo wasn't on the field and Ayuk steps up and Juwan Jennings was very good in huge spots last year. Um, and they just seem to find guys and that, that system is great. So, yeah, I mean, I guess I, you know, I kind of pushed back a little bit on the last one we did, but no, I get it, and and you kind of you have to if you want him, you got to take him there, and if once if he does if if he shows anything any movement at all, like he's going to end up being you know he's going to be in that Kyler Murray spot up there, no doubt. Um, I mean, if yeah, for sure. The 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 very interesting part about it is Jimmy G only throws the ball across the middle. You know, they show that stat, like 80% of the balls go between the hatches, which is unreal, absolutely unreal. And then for a young quarterback that has minimal reps to be drafted as highly as he was, they're not going to throw it over the middle. I, as crazy as it is, like all of the Niners guys, most of them are like, yo, we, we win with Jimmy G. Yeah. So I get – Casey's very up and down. Like his – whether or not he's – can go out and like his niner is is tie is it's in his soul. So like he don't he you know he's Trey Lance for fantasy football. If he's getting all the snaps, 
Wheels up, dude. Wheels up. Yeah. But the, for the Niners to win, he's starting. There's no. He, I know he has to start. And like Rich Eisen was saying, or maybe maybe Dan Patrick said today, like the only reason he's still actually on the Niners is because he was he had a surgery and they really can't yeah. trade him or something like that. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever that is. But like Jimmy G, when the defense knows they're passing the ball and the defense knows that's going over the middle, there's always somehow, some way, Kyle Shanahan has a guy coming across the middle that Jimmy can throw the ball to. So when Lance is actually given the reins, I cannot wait to see what Kyle draws up to make it happen because there's no chance yeah. he throws the ball over the middle like Jimmy D does. Oh, well, there's just so much more arm talent there too. Like The arm talent, but you got to be like, you got to be able to see it. You got to be able to feel it. And like for a young guy, for all the, I mean, Jimmy's not that. Well, what you, you know. get with Jimmy is a guy who you you know is eight times, seven times out of ten going to put the ball where it needs to go. Where you're not sure if you're getting that with Trey. When you saw when he came in last year, they pretty much just ran that dog shit out of him. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of running the football. No doubt. I, I don't think it'll be nearly as much as you saw with that one start from Trey Lance. That because it was just a lot of those. I don't think you want to be doing that. I think you're going to run the ball with your backs and then have some plays with Trey Lance kind of running around especially to start the season first four six games dude um, it's gonna be must must see tv must see tv must for see sure TV. so uh i'm yeah sure i'm in on trey lance i took Brees hall next um you know <laughs> i feel like did you just buy the asset right there he, he, right you you got the running back you got there, there's he's the consensus kind of one the value seems kind of built in to what's going on he was pretty much the consensus one pre-combine then blows up the combine then gets the highest draft capital out of any running back falls to a shanahan-esque system a la lafleur and uh uh sala all being kind of niners guys in there he's got a lafleur there right that's what i'm saying he's got he's got lafleur as the oc and and sala who's all come from that niners kind of tree so never really had a back they're and he he kind of fits into that scheme that they would run schematically, um, and you know I think Michael Carter will still be on the field some. He's just, was too good not to be, but Brees is going to be yeah awesome I, yeah. I think, and you know really help take some weight off of Zach Wilson whether he's great or not. He can definitely facilitate some dump downs, and they're building from the inside out. Joe Douglas likes to build an offensive line, um, so you know I think there's going to be plenty of opportunities to lean on Brees Hall. Um, throughout the season for them and and i think he's you know value baked in publicly and value baked in athletically value baked in uh from just seeing the field and being on the field tape however you want to spin that so yeah i took i took the shot there i mean who else it it was Mixon or barkley really for me as the next two guys and it's just you know yeah i I felt like turn back the clock if you if that's what if you're looking at running back there you pretty much you had to with the guys that were gone off the board well, it's either I, I, I kind of wanted Stafford. I would have taken. St- I feel okay about Stafford there. That's yeah. Um, if you're running, I'm, I'm saying if you were just going running back, right. you got to turn back the clock. You got to take the 21 year old. You right. Know? Well, that's kind of you know. I was looking at running backs. I'm looking at receivers. It's like all right. I, I want to take AJ Brown. Everything in me saying, hey, take AJ Brown there. I just health wise, I, I don't know what's up with those knees. A lot of things I've read throughout last off season and this off season and. Then just on the Eagles, I think Jalen Hurts will be a fine fantasy quarterback. I don't can he support Devonta Smith, AJ Brown, Dallas Goddard, Kenny Gal, uh, Kenny Gainwell, Miles Sant. Like I mean, just how's that going to work? You saw them kind of transform into what looked like a better system for them, being more consistent at running, yeah, being a more running style team. Yeah, I'm not sure what their passing volume is going to look like to be able to right I mean, to facilitate both of those guys. And I and I really really like both of those guys. It for sucks. sure, for sure. Um, Stock up, Jalen Hurts. You saw Goddard just be great after Hurts left, so that seemed to be his guy. But uh, we shall see. So yeah, I took Brees there. T Law, I guess, was sort of in the conversation a little bit. I like I like the rebound on T Law. I wish he would be down a little bit, but I think I think I was expecting Brees Hall to be a back end uh one running back in standard drafts, non super flex. So I mean yeah. 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 You had the same thought process I did with Javante. Right. So we'll go into round three here. So we got Kittle coming off the board first, AJ Brown, Jalen Waddle, Debo at three four. Uh, Mixon at 3-5, Diggs at 3-6, Cook at 3-7, Hurts at 3-8, uh, Devontae 3-9, Eckler, uh, Henry, which I believe was an auto pick for you, and then yep. Kelsey. Um, 
So I'm kind of first up in this regard. I, I don't dislike any of those picks leading up to me. Uh, Waddle is – I can't quit Waddle. I loved Waddle before Tyreek came there. Like he was – he was up there right in the mix with all the top guys. I think he's great. And now I think the system that is fitting around him, another 49ers kind of guy in that tree who could fit perfectly in a yak style system, Jalen Waddle. Obviously, you got some competition with Tyreek, but I think Tua can facilitate. If, if Jimmy G can facilitate yeah. offensive production, Tua can absolutely facilitate offensive production. Whether he's the guy or not next year, I don't know if they see enough from him, but uh, still in on Waddle, uh, a good bit young enough. Uh, and I saw enough that I really like him. I'm probably not taking Debo at that spot there. Um, I could have been in. I was definitely looking at Barkley there, pretty heavy. Um, was maybe hoping he would get back to me, and then Mixon was a little bit in the mix. But for mo- for the most part, um, I was lo- even looking at Waddle at, at the two ten spot. So yeah. Um, so that's what that's what I did there. Debo, like I said, not not all that interested. Joe Mixon there, not not that I'm not interested, in, disinterested in Debo. Maybe I don't know. I'm just guess I'm just not in on three four because I'd been paying such a low price. No, that's not it. If that's you not- <laughs> if you were no, that's not it. That's not what it is. If you were playing Madden, you could turn injuries off. I'd take Debo in the first round. I took Cup at, <laughs> C- Cooper Cup at two two. You turn injuries off. If Debo can play like a linebacker from the wide receiver slash running back position all game long, all season long. He doesn't long. want to play the running back position anymore. Yeah, I know, right? But he will be because they're going to be trying to win games. So if, if you could turn injuries off, Debo's, Debo's up there with first with top, late back of the first round. It'll be interesting to see what that contract says about yeah, Debo's usage sure. yeah. running back wise because that seemed, seemed, seemed like one of the biggest, stickiest points of contention in that yeah, whole season. There's any escalators in there with carries. It's I think once be, you pay him, maybe he doesn't give a fuck. The guarantees. The, the guaranteed money now, like with Cooper. You got to guarantee me enough money that the, the, I'll. Uh, yeah. If I get hurt first week out because I'm running from the tailback position, it is what it is. I just got 65 million guaranteed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll be okay. Yeah, I'll try. I'll try. I'll take my chances. Snap the ball. Fair enough. Give it to me. Um, Mixon, as it was, I, I think Barkley should be the next guy off the board for me. Uh, but Mixon, anybody got a real problem with Mixon there? I, I took him, so no. Yeah. Okay. That's your pick. <laughs> so yeah. you you took him over Barkley. I you did honest, end up getting Barkley. Yeah, which was crazy. Which yeah, was great. But crazy. so what was your yeah. thought there? Um, I just love that Bengals offense. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. the Bengals offense for me. Yeah, it, I think it's going to be one of the best five to six offenses in the NFL for the next five to six years. Right. Mixing decent young enough to yeah, not, not be sure. super scared yeah. and to get him in the third round. I think, yeah. I think I'm fine I, with yeah. that. I think Joe Mixon's underrated. I think that I yeah. think people are seeing that less since he was able to stay healthy all last year, but I mean, probably gonna rush another 12, 1400 yards. Decent amount of catches. Yeah, decent amount of catches. He's just a good a fucking player. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that offensive line is, is you know, should be yeah, getting better honestly, and better. With, with, they, with they, this, they added, they added some good pieces on the offensive oh, line. Oh, they got yeah. And w- and with this team, if Mixon's doing well and the other two guys are doing well, then he's going to be traded probably because I'd rather have the other two over. I honestly didn't even, I didn't scroll down far enough to see Barkley. Otherwise, I probably would have taken Barkley. Okay. All right. So Diggs goes next. Um, I guess I'm fine with that. Dalvin Cook, probably not taking Dalvin there. Anybody interested in Dalvin at 3-7? Yeah, I didn't. I feel like all the next running backs were just a bit of a question for me. I mean, I'll take Dalvin or Eckler. I would probably. I feel like Eckler's got the longevity. He's a, a tick, he's a, another year older, but for me, I feel like Eckler uh-huh. could. It's it's got a better chance of riding off into the Dalvin sunset. Dalvin and Eckler are pretty much the same age. Yeah, I I could take uh I could take some. I could take Dalvin or Eckler. I, I'm being super flex. I, obviously, if he wasn't, Dalvin wouldn't be in the middle of the third round. But I, I think I think it's some of his injury history. I think he's gonna have a. I think he's gonna have a monster year. I think you're. I think you're getting Dalvin I, I, for the next two years. I think he's gonna have a monster year. You know, it's just like, yeah, it's a big, it's a pun on your future. It's it's a it's a you know, a stamp on I'm trying to win right now. You'd obviously. rather have Cook than Barkley. Mm. Maybe not. Yeah, I can't do that. This is, Barkley's two years younger than him. Yeah, and just I think if you like getting back to being the elite asset that Barkley, I, I, I'm eating all this discount I can with Barkley, and I love it. So, um, Dalvin there. Plus, there could there's a potential there that off the field stuff never cut. Nothing ever really came of it, but there was at the middle of the season, late late season, there was some baby mama drama and some pictures and some. 
issues with Dalvin's. It seems like it kind of been swept under the rug for now, but uh, there's there was something there. Uh, yeah. So also then again gives me a little bit of pause. But I like the Zimmer exit and and you know for, bringing for, in Dable for, for sure. Oh uh, no, yeah, or, uh, oh yes, for sure, yes. Uh, yeah. They brought in uh, the guy from the Rams. Correct. Yep. Um, uh, I'm drawing a blank. Kevin O'Connell. Yeah. Uh, Jalen Hurts, three eight. I, I get fantasy points wise. I like it. I just don't know where the longevity lies. I, I think. Yeah. I think he he'll be fine. He'll get another opportunity in the league if 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 not long for the Eagles. And fantasy wise, that's. I mean, he's gonna score. I don't know though. I mean, you could make the case if Jalen Hurts has a bad year. He could be looking. At, that's a big boomer bust pick there. It seems because with the, with the sure. quarterback class coming in next year from co- from, from college, if it plays out like we think it is, and we know it never does, but I mean they're talking. There's five to seven guys who could be first round draft yeah. picks next year. Quarterback. And the Eagles played their hand well with being sure. set themselves up to pl- be able to middle this and play it how they want to. I mean Jalen Hurts does keep getting better. Fantasy wise, he was good on the field, hit and miss. Like yeah. if you're actually watching the game. Good and bad. I think he'll play well enough that he that he'll get at least another at least a couple more years. I think somebody will give him a shot if the Eagles don't uh, another go round where he'll get probably two another year or two from somebody else, even if he doesn't isn't long for the league. Which we're just kind of projecting that, and it's yeah. been the the narrative for a while. So who knows? I know that you're probably you probably like that pick, Big Co. I'll take it. I'll take it all day long. This is thirteenth quarterback off the board. Yeah, I he's, think I think for quarterbacks he's, he's, he's fine. Yeah. He's, He's the 13th off the board. He's going to be he's a top five fantasy. You're, you're in a dead zone there, and it's a good, it's a perfect pick. He's 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 going to be a top five fantasy pick, a fantasy quarterback. And in the middle of the year last year, they complete after the first five or six games, they completely changed the way they run their offense. Um, so imagine how that's supposed to work for a young quarterback. Yeah, you know, I I would I'm, I think that Hertz has no problems. Be I mean. They just went out and traded. They got A.J. Brown. Mm-hmm. Devonta Smith is a second-year player now, and and so is Gainwell. And, you know, and they, the coach. And and the tight end questions are over. Goddard's a stud, you know. So I just feel like – second year of Sirianni. Sure. Uh, figured it out. Changed some things throughout the, the year. Yeah, figured it out. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all in on the fact that some people are all out. I love that because it hurts – I was in this time last year. Don't get me wrong. This time last year, I was like, "Hey, you just take him. He's gonna crush, and then you can trade him." Yeah, one hundred percent. And I'm like, now I'm like, he he did crush. He it was an awful, crazy start to the season. It was horrible looking, and he was just well, he was running him in. He yeah. got it. He got a touchdown. It would, and it really was. I mean, it would be three quarters. He'd have seven fantasy points. Yeah, he'd finish with twenty two. Yeah, like yeah. And, or twenty eight. And you know, if he got another rushing touchdown. But then as the season went on, bang, 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 kept getting better, kept getting better. The team turned it around. Like, why not? Well, the coach adjusted what they were doing. I, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. they, 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 they completely changed their offense. If you're good, you got to build the offense around what Hurts does. It's not necessarily going to be great for every asset around him. But what they've done, as much as we were just talking about how it's not a not good for A.J. Brown and, and Devontae Smith and Goddard necessarily. It's great that's, for Jalen Hurts. That's why, while you were talking, I was, right. snuck in there and I just to go stock up Hurts. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, he's no, no, and, and, consistently week to week. I mean, obviously any of those guys would be fun in best ball, but like consistently week to week, is it good? Maybe A.J. Brown's going to be a little bit dicey week to week. Some of those weeks might be monsters. Devontae Smith certainly going to be a questionable start now that A.J. Brown's there and Hurts being his quarterback. The one thing that's cons- consistent for me is Hurts is going to be in your lineup each and every week kicking ass and, yeah. and and here's the thing i don't give a shit whether they go in 16 or not he's gonna score fantasy right. points i don't I, really agree. care what the record is yeah yeah agreed well i and mean the, to a certain they're, if they're all in 16 he's probably if playing you for draft else. him you yeah. want them to do well enough for him not to get shit canned but i think yeah and, and to your point the guys coming in next year like all i mean matt ryan's got a starting job man's 38 you know what yeah. i mean like yeah Tom Brady ain't playing forever, for real, for real. I mean, I mean it this time. Like he's not playing well, forever. It, Jalen Hurts is a starter next year somewhere, no matter Arthur how bad Smith, he does. Arthur Smith says, "Hey, you know, maybe we maybe we can trade for Hurts for cheap, and we don't have to spend our top five pick on him." And and Arthur Smith takes him and kind of yeah. Tannehill's him into building the system around him. And you know, there's there's teams that will accompany will Lamar will the. Would we be talking about Lamar Jackson in the capacity that we talk about Lamar Jackson now if he didn't go to the Ravens? 
There's, right. there's, uh, oh, there's at least half the league that would have fucked that up. Yeah. And exactly. the Ravens did not. And I don't think, and it's not going to be the Falcons that trade for Hurts, I don't think, because they're going to, they got Drake London and Pitts and they want somebody to throw the ball. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and, maybe, it's, and it's, it's, I think Jalen Hurts, I don't know. I don't, don't tell me that Jalen yeah. Hurts can't get his, I, 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 I've been saying it for four years that Jalen Hurts can throw the ball. I think, I think they care about winning more so than anything. And I think he, he would, Jalen yeah, Hurts can construct. Win. He can. He can he certainly can win. win you he some win. ball games. Yeah. I think if you if you play your hands right, he's not. You don't. You can't ask him to go out there and be Herbert and yeah, n- yeah. and Burrow and and those. I like kind what of guys, you said. The half the teams in the league would maybe three quarters of the teams in the league would have really screwed up Lamar Jackson. What I like to see was that the that Sirianni or may, maybe I don't know. It seems like there's some weird disconnect between. It seems like the Eagles front offense wants wants one of those Herbert like guys in there. Well, so does everyone. Which is, well, yeah. So does everybody. Yeah, so but the Eagles everybody. are put have been actively putting themselves in position to make that happen. Yeah. Um, well, they still should. Even though who knows? Sure. You know? I'm not saying that they shouldn't. I'm I'm just saying. So the fact that Sirianni went from kind of doing one thing mm-hmm. and kind of forcing Jalen Hurts to try to be this standard issue quarterback and then switching the style up mid season and and actually. Kind of doing the Ravens s thing, being a coach, right? It was yeah. fantastic. It gives me a lot, a little bit more confidence to say Jalen Hurts because this is a dead zone of quarterbacks, and you can take him here, and it's going to be good points. But I agree, there's certainly some boomer bust, which I don't like to exercise all that much in the second and third round. Well, front office is doing what they should do to prepare themselves for a shot at a top five NFL draft pick for a good quarterback and have those am- ammunition picks to trade up to get what they need to get. And Jalen Hurts is like, hold my beer. I'm a starter. Watch this. Yeah. yeah. You know, he's doing what he's supposed to do. Yeah. So Devonte goes next. And I feel like if you're, if you feel good about Cooper cup at two, two, I feel like, I guess, you know, obviously you, you saw Cooper cup with Stafford. So you know what you're getting there. And yeah. so, yeah, but I feel like you can't have Devonte Adams all that much further. I mean, we saw, I mean, we, you, saw we saw Carr and Adams together right, just eight uh, years ago. Right, right, <laughs> right. But that also makes you feel good that you know that they, yeah. there's a rapport, there's a chemistry, they've For worked sure. together. They're going to, it's, you can kind of get a little Stafford cup esque style thing going yeah. on. That, just make sure they have breakfast together. Right. Well, they live next to each other. Perfect. Adams and, uh, car so uh, i guess that'd be more of a question directed at you because i wouldn't have taken cup there uh i Devonte adams felt like an okay pick at three three points wise week in week out maybe even probably safer than Jalen waddle there but w- where would you take Devonte adams if you're going to take cup at two two i was screaming for Devonte adams last time we did this and it's not an accident that he left the packers and he went to the raiders with mm-hmm. car like you said they right. college boys uh live beside each other like like you said that's perfect scenario perfect analogy bringing cup and stafford into this because adams doesn't walk away from rogers to go play with old matt ryan you know what i mean or or random jalen hurts for that you know chasing whomever yeah adams doesn't say hey i love catching 112 passes a year let me go play with jalen hurts right jalen you know that's that adams goes and plays with his best friend they're they're they've I have no idea what who's be, uh, Devontae Adams' best friend is, but they say yeah. whoever they are that it's Derek Carr. Yeah, and they say they've been best friends since they were in college together, and he put they put each other in the league. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I'm complete, dude. I am so excited to get a Devontae Adams on the cheap because this time last year he was one eight, mm-hmm. and now he's three eight. Please give yeah. me him. Give me a little, him. a little, a little, half a year older than Cooper Cup. Devontae I'll take them Adams both. Is. I'll yeah. take them both. I think it's fine. I'm not in love with it, but I think it's fine. It would be interesting to get, like, I would really be interested to just not take Cooper Cup where I did and see how far down he goes. He couldn't go but a handful of picks more, but it would yeah, be, I don't know. Like probably, you said, probably no, would have no been receivers the end of the got taken where Cooper yeah. Cup went. So it'd be very interested, very interesting to see where Cup would have gone if I didn't take him. But I'm, I'm, I would love to do a startup right now, trade back out of the first round, gobble up a couple picks, come out with Adams and Cup and Jalen Hurts and. <laughs> Some just some nasty. I mean, those are those are that's that's a championship formula squad for a year. But we're playing, and maybe two. Uh, But I mean, the easiest the easiest year to win a dynasty league is the is is the first year. Yeah, yeah, and like I said, I was it felt it would have felt good to put Adams on my team at three three instead of taking Waddle. I just you feel I feel like you want to take the young guy. But but I but I wanted to take. I really really like Waddle and the and the youth just. Pushes sure. me over the edge, and you know when you pass on when you take Waddle there, you're not getting Adams back. Right, 
Right. All right. So then the uh, Eckler goes there and then you got auto pick Derrick Henry. I'm sure there's, uh, I don't, you probably would have taken a tight end or another quarterback there if I had to guess. Yeah, I definitely wasn't taking Derrick Henry there. Um, not that it's Is anybody that, taking Derrick Henry there? No, no. Agreed. Um, not that he can't be the sure, RB one, but I'm just, I can't do that. Um, and you said Eckler over Cook? Yeah, I could definitely. I could have taken Eckler, Eckler there. Eckler over Cook for you? or I think I'm going to take Cook over Eckler. I think I've... Um, yeah, that's a coin flip for me. So anyway. I think it's it's close. I, I, yeah. I, you, you could probably, with a good five in argument, give, swing me either way, but I think I'm going to take Cook 52 out of 100 times. Uh, I agree with that. So I, if I could easily take a DK Metcalf over Derrick Henry there if I didn't get autoed. I could easily take Saquon Barkley. Um, I could have a good time and just go ahead and jump into the rookie pool and take Drake London and have the asset that everybody loves. Probably the smartest play is to grab a run a quarterback. I love Justin Fields. I don't know. I don't have a lot of faith that the Bears aren't going to mess this up. Who? Why, why would I? Why would I believe in what the Bears are doing? Yeah. Why? Why, I, they have no track record to tell you otherwise. They why are would the I opposite believe of the Ravens why, ra- the opposite of the Ravens or franchise, franchise wise. wise? Right. Yeah. So like I would be I'm like, dude, how can I not take Justin Fields here? But why would you want to take the Bears quarterback and they yeah. look at who they're trying to trot him out there to throw to? Like you said, that we're all in on Fields this year and he's going to be this and we're doing this for him like you got nobody for him to throw yeah. to. Yeah, Darnell Mooney and a whole bunch of who gives a shit. Pringle, yeah, St. Byron Brown. Pringle, yeah, no, Cole Kmet. Vilas Jones. No, nothing wrong with those guys. They just shouldn't be the whole squad. No, that shouldn't yeah. be your wide receiver. Well, that's, I that mean, those guys depth. should be that spread should be out. Depth, yeah. I took yeah. Cole Kmet in the 10th or 11th round, and that's the reason why I took Cole Kmet, because I'm like, there is nobody, I really like the player, and there is nobody else to throw to, and they were kind of developing a little chemistry at the end of the year there, so I'm like, give me Kmet. Yeah, like, yeah, for sure, you know. for sure. But anyway, keep going. Oh, I listen. agree with you. We we did the one last week, and I think I took Fields somewhere like maybe uh, what would be the one nine, so four four. I think I ended up taking Fields there. But see, like you, if you, if it's not Fields there, it's not. There's a reason why none of the no, no other quarterbacks right. went for a while. Well, that's what I'm yeah. saying. It was it was it got to a point where it's it's now it's you take Fields or now it's Tua Carr. Old Rodgers. None of those guys right now. Tommy. Yeah. Uh, and then Kirk is the next guy out of those guys that I don't mind taking, but it's got to be a, a bunch of rounds later. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Which, again, you know, Q, Big Co talking about a mock draft. That's a great time to just trade back. Get whatever you can get to back it on up. Yeah. All right. So Fields goes 4-1. Tyreek 4-2. Kamara 4-3. I think that was an auto pick. Probably some stuff coming up on there. Metcalf 4-4. Gibson 4-5. Uh, Higgins 4-6. Uh, Chubb four seven, Barkley four eight, London four nine, DJ Moore four ten, Kenny three sticks four eleven, and Travis Etienne. Uh, Ken Walker, you mean? Ken Walker. Why them boys playing that man out? <laughs> he can't get a Kenneth or a Kenny. The boy said Ken, like he's a um, black Barbie doll, a, an old old man. <laughs> Like um, the old man, yeah. if it has, he's yeah. been Kenneth his whole life. Yeah. Now people just start calling him Ken. Kenneth or old. Kenny, and then you, yeah. you hit him with Ken. You can't keep Kenny when you get old. You got to drop the yeah the knee the, the, the NY yeah yeah. All right, so Fields goes four one. Kind of talked about him already, and then you're up at four two. I think Hill was an auto pick for you as well. He was. We're in a string of auto picks for Big Co here. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but that's why we're talking about it. This is mostly an exercise to just get talking about who we sure, like where. Sure, sure, sure. Um, well, uh, you I don't t- hate Tyreek there, though. Uh, How can you? How can you? He's definitely going to get force fed some targets. You don't pay a man, you know, sixty-five, seventy-two million dollars guaranteed to come in here and be like, "Hey, yeah. draw the defensive coverage that way. We're going to dump it down the waddle all day." I mean, your like, team looks great for twenty twenty-two. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's certainly yeah. It's a great redraft team right there. Um, I I'm certainly not upset. I got auto Tyreek Hill in the fourth round. Um, I, yeah, Casey's right. My whole team the next. Every other pick is autoed. Uh, we the draft <laughs> made it through two. Turned into a <laughs> ninety second pick clock, and I was uh, for, out shooting pool for the first Be- time because in seven said, months. We said we're gonna change. We're gonna switch the clock. He said, "Interesting." <laughs> 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 that was his only text. I got invited to pool night. I declined. I went. I said next week I'm in. I Tell me what night it is. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. Um, so Tyreek, there. Uh, you, would you take Metcalf over Tyreek? Or or T over Tyreek, or you said Drake London over Tyreek. You take all those guys over Tyreek. I mean, 
if you just pigeonhole me in the wide receivers right there. I've, I've, no, no, no. I'm not pigeonholing you in okay. that. You take Obviously, you quarterbacks want. are off the board right now. There's no quarterback I can take right now, and for a good reason. If I'm sitting there, I, like I could take DK Metcalf again just because he's five years younger and he's he's a physically, you know, he's a super stud. He's an Adonis. Uh, I could take a I could take that take that swi- uh, swipe on Barkley if he's still there. Sure. Why 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 not just hang on to Tyreek? You know. Yeah. Okay. Not taking Tyreek there. Okay. Because? He's 27. 27? He's only 27? Uh, uh, 28. 27 and paid. 28. 28. He's 28. I mean, you're getting him for another probably two years peak Tyreek. But what is it? But it, I don't think peak Tyreek looks like we, what we saw the last couple of years. No, no, probably not. And you're getting the discounts a little bit built in there. I, I do. I, I like discounts what, a lot of built. I in like there. what the system could potentially be there of a lot of. There's a lot of a and, lot of unknowns yak, there, but there sure. certainly is some unknown. But I, I like the I like the head coach. Maybe a little Niners bias, but he's been around that Shanahan system since like 2005. Been everywhere that he goes with him. Um, I like that for their running Devo game. Gives I like that for so their, much love. I like that for their running game, but I mean that's a whole another separate yeah. issue there, yeah. more so than for their wide receivers. But I mean, I don't hate it, but it's probably not what I would do there. Okay. Um, so then, uh, let me just see. jump in Go here ahead. real quick while we're on. T- and he's my, it's my pick. Tyreek Hill and Debo. I haven't heard those two names in the same sentence, but that's I, what I was thinking about today while I was reading some stuff, taking a poop. The Doo-doo. the Debo comparisons to all these other oh well he's, this guy's like Debo this guy's like no he's not no none of those guys are like Debo Tyreek Hill is just like Debo the he, Tyreek Hill is a very good comp for Debo and a, now he's going into a system that could use like I've heard so many people say oh well this player that yeah this wide receiver could be like a Debo Devin Duvernay was on somebody's text thread today saying just because he returns kicks he could be Debo like you can't beat is Devin Duvernay all of a sudden six foot 212 well I mean that would be the you that know? would be the difference between Tyreek and Debo is that yeah. they're just built differently well but, but I mean Tyreek Hill is always pound the way for pound, they move pound for pound Tyreek Hill's the toughest player on the field I was like yeah. he he plays Obviously, he plays fast or never, but you know, at, he's 4.2. So like I know a, you like do, but slander just, his name. You don't have to slander his name, but he's not six <laughs> foot two twelve. 12. No, he's like, he's 5'9". <laughs> he's not even dollar store Debo. Yeah. So, he's Tyreek. at least dollar general Debo. <laughs> <laughs> Based on where, where regular Debo gets on. Maybe, maybe buy low Debo. Tyreek Hill could act like Debo. The closest, dollar store discount rack. Yeah, yeah, the discount rack at the dollar store. Got you. <laughs> yeah. So he could be the mo- he could be the clo- he could be Debo, even though obviously he's Tyreek Hill and he's got his own Pro Bowls yeah. and All Pros and you know championship rings and stuff. I've just all they these. Got Devin Dever- I thought he was shorter. They got him listed at five eleven two ten. So I mean, <laughs> they got him at two ten. I didn't. He looks skinnier than that. Oh, uh, he looks. He's he's always no, he's been a, a little yoked. Yeah, I knew boy. he was thick. I just thought he was like five nine. Yeah, and he runs. He's fast. I fucking love that guy. <laughs> I didn't. Have, I didn't think he had that you much. You take him with your last pick of the draft. Stock <laughs> up, Duvernay. Only doing sixteen rounds, but I, I, he's on the list. He just gained fifteen pounds overnight. <laughs> Stock up, Duvernay. Anyway, I just want to throw it out there. The Debo comparisons are everywhere. You said Debo and Hill. Hill, if the Shanahan disciple wants to play with a Debo esque type player, there's nobody better fit in the league to to do it. Then, uh, yeah, he might be fifteen pounds lighter, but Tyreek Hill is. He plays like a linebacker. So you took uh, Saquon. We've Mentality been, of we've a We've been screaming about Saquon since I took it 3-3, and then you took Mixon. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I think this that's a home run pick for me. Like, that's every pick that went off the board it's after homer, I picked. It's a homer home run pick. Yeah. Uh, every pick after 3-3 for me was I would have taken Barkley instead of that guy. Great pick. Great um, pick. I, I, I love that a whole yeah. lot. I, think. I mean, I would have much rather taken a – I would have probably rather have gotten a wide receiver there in terms of the way my team was. But, I mean, to get Barkley at 4-8 after he was going as a top eight pick even in Superflex drafts yeah. a year and a half ago. And I think I think that he's still reco- he was still last year recovering from that knee injury. Um, then his ankle did this? Yeah. 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 Well, then he just had he a had super unfortunate just stepping on – Ankle in the in the cowboy yeah. game there, and and the, that often should be much better with Dable at as the right head coach as well. So and I feel like you'll the, the getting back to using him in the pa- passing game from that rookie season where he caught ninety balls or whatever. Yeah, um, I think this time next year, 
Barkley will be back in the second round conversation. Yeah. He's trying to get that bag too. So yeah, um, yeah, I like Barkley there. Um, how about Chubb at four seven? I feel like Chubb is like the hardest guy for me to rank running back wise. Is it, uh, you guys feel good about Chubb at four seven? I gotta take some. I got to take some of those receivers that are going to hold well, that value longer. I got to take a couple of running backs and some receivers before I, that. Now that I don't – if you if you take the PPR off, give me Chubb. I'd bump him up two rounds. But when you're playing PPR, just uh, – I don't know why they can't – or they're not watching the same games I'm watching. Like, if you, when you do throw it to him, he makes somebody miss, and he ch- yeah. plugs ahead, and nobody wants to tackle him. It's the same as Derrick Henry. I mean, yeah. you throw it to him, he usually – I don't understand. Obviously, he's not Dalvin Cook, and he's not running some of those routes. He's a long way away from Christian McCaffrey. But if you do, just scheme up some little bit misdirection and get him over here in the flat and dump it down to him, and, he's all, and now he's Nick Chubb with the ball in his hand. Yeah. He doesn't have to run through 11 people. Kareem Five Hunt's defensive. so damn good, though. I mean, Kareem Hunt is good. Yeah. Some talk about him maybe moving. I think he stays put. I mean, it's, he's only there for another year. Uh, you seem like you're maybe a little bit more into Chubb. I think probably a little more to Chubb than you guys are, but mm-hmm. I mean, there's a couple guys I'd rather have over Chubb there as well. Okay. I I, I don't I don't mean to not I love I, Nick I, Chubb. I know. I, I feel, respect. I don't want to throw I respect, just like Devin Duvernay. I don't want to throw any slander on my man's name, but also, I, I've, I've also definitely if, been if, skipping if, over him. And if Watson was starting Week One, I think I like Chubb more there too. True. Yeah. I, it, or just, is it the well? No, you can't really. I mean, I'd say the saying. Hey, we got to get out of there and pound the ball now all year because we don't have Watson. But I mean, yeah. you're going to have so many more scoring opportunities with Watson out there than yeah. It's a good point. Watson puts you in the red zone a lot more often. Uh, so Barkley goes, then then Drake London goes. Uh, I took DJ Moore at four ten. I, I, I love taking DJ Moore in four fifth, fourth fifth round here. Great player, bad situation. Yeah, but still even. You know, beginning of the season with a healthy Sam Darnold last year was on fire, um, and has been pretty freaking good every year in a bad situation. So yeah. I'm I'm still in on DJ Moore. The player is good. He's even the same age as some of these rookies. Yeah, even when the situation's bad, he's good. If they can just get a little bit of improvement, I like DJ Moore. Thought about it. Kenny three six was on the on the chart for me there, but I had already taken Brees Hall, and I was like, I can't, I yep. can't, I can't yep. put Kenny and Brees on the same team. Um, so skip there. So then Kenny Walker and Travis Etienne. Etienne was on the board uh, for me there. Too one early of, for Etienne for me. One of my favorite picks right now and favorite trade targets is Etienne all day long. I love I love the pass volume that could be there. I love the vo- the rushing volume that could be there. Um, I love the player in general. Um, so too early for you though. Yep. Like how early? How, how much late? You got to you got to. We talking four or five picks early? Like we're semantics, or are we talking? You, you need. Well, maybe we'll, we'll go through the next round and you'll I'm say. Looking at, I'm, I'm looking say over when, here. You say when we get to ETM when we go through the next round, okay? All right, so Dobbins goes next off the board at 5 1. Rather have Dobbins. Are they fair? you looking at me? Yeah. Well, ETN or Dobbins? Uh, ETN. Okay. All right, so let me go through this round real quick. Dobbins, uh, then Godwin, uh, Deontay Johnson, 5 3. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, 5'4", Pittman, 5'5", Hawkinson, 5'6", uh, Derek Carr, 5'7", Zeke, 5'8". Early, so I've seen Zeke go in a long time. Uh, Tua, 5'. I like Zeke is one of my favorite guys if he's going in the 7th, 8th round to just boom. Yeah. Um, Ty, uh, Tua, 5'9", McLaurin, 5'10", uh, Cam Akers, 5'11", uh, and Garrett Wilson, 5'12". So um, I had... I'll be the first one on the clock on that. Uh, I was hoping I was looking at Deontay Johnson a little bit in that 410 spot. So I was happy when he got back to me. PPR machine. We're playing PPR. Sure. We don't have Ben Roethlisberger, but I think that's probably a good thing after the last couple of years have been. Yeah. But I mean, he, he, he doesn't give a sh- He was always looking Deontay's way. So I could see a little slight regression volume wise with Deontay, but still going to be good on the field. And Deontay left a lot of things on the field yeah. last year. So, um, I think Kenny uh, Pickett or Mitchell can can facilitate some Deontay and uh, be just fine. So, uh, would you take uh, Godwin or Deontay Johnson? Etn. I think I looked guys? over the whole round. I think I'd rather have the whole round over uh, okay. the Etn. All right. Just to move this along quickly. No, that's that's great. I, I think that's like I said. I'm I'm big. I'm big into trading I'm, for I'm Etn. Just concerned about his his ability to run the ball. Okay. Sure. 
Hey, I, there's plenty of people who feel the same way you do about tight ends and about Travis Etienne. So I'm, I can't. I'm not going to be like, no, you're wrong. I, yeah, I think that's that's why we do this. Yeah, he, that's everyone has their own opinion. Yeah, I, I, I'm on the opposite end of like I'm. I'm trying to trade. I'm fucking. Lo- I like that there's some <laughs> down <laughs> but what value. You, on here's ETN. the thing: if I'm giving up a 2022 first round pick, or like, what's the earliest 2022 first you're giving up for Travis Etienne? Um, because you can look at it versus on who's still on the board and you could pick. Like those rookies. Pro- probably probably like, one four. Like the Garrett Wilson still on the board. Yeah, so you're give me, taking give me, if, give me ETN yeah. over Garrett Wilson. Right. No, I think it's a rather And it, it's a coin flip for me whether I'd rather have Burks, Drake, or ETN. Because I think if ETN was in this running back class, he probably would be their RB2 or RB3. And I would take I'm still I'm taking Kenneth Walker over all those receivers anyway, so I would take Brees, Kenny, ETN, but I'd probably put ETN ahead of Kenny. Yeah, I think I have the wide receivers still over ETM. Yeah, and I think a lot of players in dynasty wise, because of things that Big Co said in the beginning of this about how you know run, you got burned by running backs, and if you had the wrong ones at the wrong times, the, the, the shelf life shorter. So people like you know wide receivers in dynasty. But yeah, I, and if you had the right ones at the right time, your team was unbeatable. You yeah. won a lot of money, mm-hmm. uh, but you could you know I've, I've won it. I've, I've won both, it. I've, I've won it zero ways. RB, and I've, I've but had I've had more ways, success yeah. robust wise. Running back. Well, yeah, my concerns with ETN are the fact that he's coming off of a foot injury. Sure. I had concerns about him coming out of college, and then um, not to mention the fact that James Robinson is still there. Yeah, I, I like the fact that James Robinson's still there, but you know, on a Achilles from late in the season. True. So that that doesn't. I, that's why I'm even more into ETN. Um, but who knows? And there's really nothing else behind ETN. That's you know, Snoop no, Connor. Absolutely not. Who yeah. Is does provide you with something different than ETN, but I'm not worried about him. No. Um, and then I don't even know who else is there. I so. couldn't tell you. Um, all right. So uh, anybody any anybody else in the round that you think you don't like before I get to Big Co here? We got Rogers, Pittman. I wasn't Hockinson, crazy about Carr. taking Pittman, to be honest with you. Okay. I felt like I needed to take someone who could possibly be my wide receiver one. And I felt like he gave me the best shot of the guys who were still on the board. I was thinking about Wilson there as well, too. But I wanted, yeah, I was. I took Pittman because he gives me that prototypical wide receiver one frame, the ability with Ryan there. I'm not really worried about anyone else there, and I actually ended up taking his teammate several rounds later, anyways. So I would say I'd put Pittman in the ETN category of a guy who I'd be trying to trade for a lot this off season. But the cat's out of the bag there. I think the value's yeah. probably gone too high. Although we're looking at this. Um, but sorry, I just saw a text message come on my thing that I didn't really enjoy. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't you, hate you got the, any problem with Pittman there. I don't mm-hmm. hate the value. I just felt like I got kind of pigeonholed there. I'm sitting in the middle of round five without a wide receiver. Yeah. Well, you didn't think Barkley was going to make it back. No, to you, you no. know, and you had to take you had to do what you had to do. And then you got stuck with Pittman. And I think that's good. I think I think I don't I think. Obviously, I don't mind getting stuck with Pittman, getting those three players ahead of him. Exactly. Well, that, when I mean uh, when I mean that, I meant you got him in the fifth round. You got yeah. stuck with Pittman halfway through the fifth. He just happens to be. I like I like your logic there of saying, if I'm taking a wide receiver here, I'm taking the upside play of Pittman. Yep, I'm like taking that. a young upside yep. player. Yeah, right. And he's 24 years old. Sure. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, you. Got auto Zeke's probably a little early for me there with what I've been seeing. I like the value typically on Zeke. You know, you, you kind of got you're getting pigeonholed into quarterbacks right there. I don't love taking Rogers Carr or Tua in the fifth round. It looked like um, I think that guy might have got that might have been an auto yeah. pick for Zeke. That's why he yeah. was up there that high. Um, but I guess if I you know I, you don't know you never know what Rogers going to do wild card. I, I feel pretty good about Derek Carr and his surroundings yeah. as well as Tua but Derek Carr seems like he's not lobbying for he's not playing he's not in that Jalen Hurts and Tua realm where it's a kind of seems like it's a one year deal we oh, got to kind of make extension. it and break he's, it he just yeah. got his extension yeah Derek he's, Carr's feels okay there so I'm I guess I'd be the most okay with him yeah in that round yep. um then Terry you you got autoed Cam Akers is that would you be down with Cam Akers there it doesn't hurt my feelings I mean when I saw it I'm like oh I got Cam Akers in fifth Five eleven. Um, I mean, I'm sure that I would have been able to find somebody that I would have rather had, but uh, I can't. I'm not upset with getting Cam Akers there. Residence Rams guy. What do you I think? think? I'd rather have Montgomery or Akers, but I think that's a bit of, a bit semantics there. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I would rather have Montgomery over Akers. But um, I I don't mind having Akers there. Yeah, 
I mean, if if Acres is if Acres rounds back into a little bit of form and can get the usage that we think is there and and that offense being good, that's a value like crazy. Yeah, uh, I'm not, nobody ever likes to Montgomery, even though he crushes. So his value always kind of stays, you know, fourth to sixth round. But yeah, Acres is a guy who people really loved who could be you know second round startup pick for yeah. sure yeah him and yeah him and dobbins both coming off the yeah coming off the injuries yeah and i'm I'm pretty much always taking dobbins over acres for me right now yeah i think that's fair um yeah okay so then garrett wilson goes off the board we're gonna kind of speed this up i'm just gonna go through the round and then we'll do and go through those rounds and then let's then let's zoom out for the last like 10 15 minutes of this to just kind of team construction sure Montgomery, Evans, Brady, Burks, Waller, Aaron Jones, Devontae Smith, Jerry Judy, Josh Jacobs, Schultz, uh, Jameson, and Elijah Moore go in that round. Uh, likes and dislikes in the round. I like the Schultz pick, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, big Schultz guy now. Big Schultz guy. Sure. Uh, Are you concerned about his long-term outlook? If he, he seems like he wants a new contract in Dallas. Uh, yeah. Dallas seems like they don't mind playing paying players to score touchdowns, and if, you know, if it, if if he plays well enough to decide he needs to leave the team, that means somebody's going to be picking up a good tight end. Sure. And if he doesn't play well enough that he needs to go somewhere to get more money, then I'm screwed anyway. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously I, that was my pick. Um, I was a tight end premium, kind of the, one of the last. I was hoping Waller would make it back to me because I think Waller in the sixth round is fucking sick. Um, but Schultz was there, and it was between him and Goddard. And I almost actually, at one point in the eighth round, almost or uh, seventh round, sorry, I almost went back to back Schultz Goddard because mm -hmm. um, I, you know, fuck it. Like I was like, I might need a running back here if I could if I could figure out a second or if I could figure out a third quarterback and a second good tight end. Like that's a that's a position of need that yep. somebody in this draft will need that I could facilitate myself getting a running back yep. probably with. Um, but long term wise, yeah, I mean, the, he's holding out. I, I would assume that the Cowboys, if if the if he I don't know what leg he has to really stand on to, to demand a monster contract to be yeah. at the top of the tight end totem pole. But if they could facilitate a middle of the road three year deal for him, um, I think I'm just saying Dallas is a pretty pretty good spot for a tight yeah, end to be in for sure that's um, what i'm saying like i amari um, being gone and you know dak being another year healthy Schultz not in dallas is not a sexy not a sexy correct yeah, Ga yeah. Gallup coming off injury yeah yeah great um i like the judy pick aaron jones seems like it could be a little a little early i felt like him and zeke were both kind of in that seven eight range for so long that i was absolutely in love with um brady Kind of early uh, for me there, but we'll get back to team construction yeah. uh, there. Uh, Burks, like the Waller. By the uh, way, I would take and, ETN. I love the Judy. I would take ETN over um, uh, Schultz and Moore. Okay. But the rest of the round, you're pretty uh, And probably Brady as well, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jacobs. Brady. Brady. Yeah, Aaron Jones and Jacobs are probably could go either way. You like, you like Jameson and Elijah Moore to round that round out? Yeah, okay. I like Jamison Williams a lot, and I, I don't know how you don't like Elijah Moore. Going yeah. going back, I would have rather had Williams over Judy. Really? Yep. Yep. Ooh, yep. I think I think I'm. Mm. Yep, I think Williams provides more of a more of a big play threat than Judy does. Yeah. As and who, I'm not who's gonna be who's gonna be Russell's guy? Whoever that is is about to just yeah be all. And I I, I don't know. I, I I really like. I would trade one. Seven or eight, I guess, for Judy. Could be KJ Hamler, for all we know. It certainly could be. I don't think it will be, but he's got some. He's got some love. All right, let's go. Keenan Allen, Marquise Brown. This is seventh round. Marquise Brown, Kirk D. Cousins, Connor Fryermuth, Olave, Mac, uh, Mac Jones, Zach Wilson, Lenny Fournette, Sutton, Elijah Mitchell, and Sky Moore here. So uh, likes and dislikes. Your tight end pick there. Yep. Talk to me. Love Friar Moose. Penn State guy. Uh, Love okay. Friar Moose. Okay. I'm like, I, I can't get there. Oh, I, I, I'm, I gotta no go way Goddard. can I not take Goddard over Friar Moose. But Penn State, you you know something I don't know. What's going on over I there? I love Friar Moose. I think he could, I think he has the chops that where, and like I said, I would rather have 
Fryermuth five rounds later than Andrews. I think that he has that type of talent. I don't disagree. When you, I knew, I knew you picked Fryermuth. So when you said that, like when you were like Fryermuth, eighty percent, Andrews, I would still take. Obviously, I would if I could give me good dolls, give me Schultz or Goddard in these rounds. Why I don't take Andrews? I'm not looking at Fryermuth like that. It's interesting that you are, and it's interesting you being a Penn State guy, and you're like, hey, he can do it. But being able to do it and doing it for a tight end is so hard. And Did you like Kaseki or Fryermuth more when they were there in their time? Um, I think that Fryermuth provided more of an all-around tight end, and Gasicki was definitely that that more of that athletic that wide F, receiver that, yeah, type. That, yeah, that move F type tight end. Um, I would probably yeah. said I put Fryermuth just a little bit ahead of Gasicki. But I mean, Fryermuth is like literally. I think he's like twenty. I think he just. I think he just turned twenty-one as well too. No, sorry, he's twenty-three. My bad, he's twenty-three. So, if you were in, the, if you were on the clock and Fryermuth's there and Goddard's on the clock, you obviously took Fryermuth. But can yeah. you? Hmm. I don't know. Buddy. I mean, I got to take Goddard for yeah, sure for, for sure. me, just well, because just thinking, it's proven. Just to say, hey, you know, I, let me. I mean, Fryermuth had a don. Fryermuth yeah, had a great good season, season last year as well too for a rookie tight end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I like Fryermuth a good bit. Like if. If you could probably, uh, the if God, I was tight endless or needed or we got into that ninth round and Fryermuth was still around, then I would, I'd be, you know, I you probably could, still taking Cole Komet over Fryermuth and maybe even Gasecki, but not well. Eh, I don't know. No, Go I ahead. think that I think that Fryermuth could be the second option on that. Could be a top two option on the team within within a year or two. Yeah, I'm, I guess my thoughts are is that I don't think I need to take Fryermuth at that point that's but. and that's what i was trying to say i didn't really get it out the right way but you being a friar Muth penn state guy yeah. i don't think anybody else in the seventh round with some of those names on the board especially with the goddard and you're looking at it, you're like oh well goddard's there goddard's gonna be that guy that gets taken and then a round goes off without nobody taking a tight end well, that, that would be kind of my signal is that i would see goddard on the board like you're saying and then i would be like all right i probably don't need i'm probably good to wait around on friar Muth, but if if you I mean yeah get your guy and yeah. don't miss him because after yeah. you if you don't pick Fryermuth there Goddard could have went and then right before it gets back to you Fryermuth could have went exactly yeah. so yeah all right I mean I I love James it. Connor in the seventh of a startup yeah, sounds yeah. expensive yes agreed That's don't get me wrong been my problem with him is like I, you get I to a certain him. point and you're like oh I see James Connor's on the board cool I'll look at him in three rounds and yeah. then, uh, yeah. right I want him on my team but you can't take him over Cortland Sutton what are you doing. Yeah, you know, like you can't take a James. I Connor. guess. I mean, I guess if you're super duper needy, but even then, like I'm just going to take the 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 the, the Cortland, and hopefully I can. Right, you can work with needs later. Dude. Deal. You're, yeah. you're five rounds and you're six seven six rounds into a start. I mean, you look, ain't needy about nothing. You don't need nothing yet. This is a bit of a dead zone for running backs, unless here, it's quarterback well too. This is not great running back territory. So we had a lot of guys on that uh, rookie industry mock that we just did that kind of all had similar processes of you know. I'm not, I'm not submitting lineup button right now. So my starting roster don't get hamstrung by the fact that you're not necessarily meeting the requirements that you would like to meet for your starting roster, mm-hmm. leaving this draft in May or June. Uh, so sure, you know, I, I I thought that was some good takes, which you know we kind of talk about that somewhat, but uh, kind of goes back in the vein of you know. Oh, I need a running back, but James Conner's on the board. Look, James Conner could be great. I, we, I, we've been the Conner fan club since started. He it. Fucking came out of started it. Pit there, but yeah, um, yeah, agreed. And what about Zach Wilson and Mac Jones there? Uh, safe play, upside play, <laughs> side by side. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, there's some good stats about Mac Jones as a rookie, um, consistency wise, and just you know per- 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 completion percentage and all that good stuff, and. Not so much for Zach, but the upside is there. The offense surrounding the talent surrounding Zach Wilson is really, yeah, really right, good yeah. looking. Uh, so that can only make you just, you know, salivate a little bit about what could be. Um, you know, that's. I don't want to be taking a quarterback right there. No, that, that's not. Yeah, so that's I, not, I, I took, I'm not I, looking. I took Kirk to be well, in that spot. Now the clock was running down on me a little bit, but I don't. I wouldn't. I kind of wanted Kirk in another round. I saw those other two guys there, Mac and. Zach, Kirk feels like 
head and shoulders the guy that I need to take above those guys. Just, if you would that would one quarterback, right? Yeah, I, right. I get it. I get it. Um, and I needed another one, and like, but now that now that this is played out, some like you know, I would almost just rather have Matt Ryan in the eleventh round. Obviously, but when you're on the clock, my right intention there, was to get Matt Ryan in this draft. Yeah, and have but, him as the third. But you're looking at Kirk Cousins in your seventh round there. And you're you can't. There's not another quarterback on the board that you can confidently say he's going to outscore Kirk Cousins. Right. So that's how you had to play that. You know. Right. You, so I don't love it, but I would have rather taken the fun shot on Sutton or Sky Moore. Of course, or Olave. But you. Or, but, you but if. Yeah. But like. Friermuth. I guess we'll, we'll we'll get into that in team build. Yeah. All right. I'll say just it. just as a quick aside here. I hated every running back pick in that round. Okay. Yeah. No. I. I don't. I. I guess I feel okay with Lenny, but I mean. Still Anything you said about James Conner can you can definitely, say yeah. yeah. Well, ex- except for that Leonard Fournette was, you know, has been a top end running back for as long as he's been basically with Brady. Um, but yeah, which so. is not very been, been no. very long. And and a top end running back with the Jags there for there was a, a, a year and a half period there where we were unsure, and then Leonard yeah. Fournette was good before that. Yep, and good after that. Conner also good just maybe not the same uh name cachet sure so it makes it feel a little uh dirtier so all right let's 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 spend the last 15 minutes here uh and go back into team builds uh so scroll through here what do you want to talk about well i'll let you guys scroll since i had something on the tip of my tongue if i feel like if i'm scrolling i might not say nothing for 10 minutes which would probably not make anybody upset um like your team build casey when you talk you got Kirk cousins in seven well, I'm not going to get into, uh, you know, pick it at eight probably wouldn't would have been my pick. But but if he crushes, then whatever. But so let me not tan- don't get don't tangent on pick it yet. But Herbert, Brees Hall, Waddle Moore, Deontay Schultz, Kirk Cousins, like that is the perfect quarterback to anchor. He's not going to give you there's no running upside there for that quarterback. But, you know, more often than not, Kirk Cousins is going to go out there and get you 17, 18 points. And that's what you need. Out of that. When the super flex, you can't be starting any other position that's not going to be consistently getting you what a you know a middle of the road, high end quarterback to back end quarterback one like Kirk Cousins, eighteen points a game. That's a great seventh round pick. And now, if you already had two quarterbacks, you might not need to force that. You know, I Mac Jones could be Kirk Cousins Jr. in two years. I don't know. Zach Will- Zach Wilson could be a second round startup next year if he if something clicks. But I like the safety of the Kirk Cousins pick, given that you for because all these Mac all these all these drafts mock drafts you never take two quarterbacks early. Yeah, you very usually rarely. very rarely you you usually don't have a quarterback in the first couple four or five rounds anyway if you're not in the front. Yeah, the fact that you had Herbert here is interesting. Cause you have you just, to, you know, uh, yeah, you have to. But I'm saying you usually put your other guests in the front and you get in the back and you pick and you make do. You normally don't have quarterbacks right. anyway, and you like to wait it out to wait to go six rounds and have all those different fun colors, and then get Kirk Cousins in seventh mm-hmm. is solid. Yeah. You might have fumbled it the rest of the way out, but that's that's a good seven pick. Well, from, from there, that's a good I, seven I, I just, after the Kirk, I was like, ah, but the reason I did take Pickett, and we were kind of, I kind of mentioned it earlier, is yeah. that I was kind of wanted to take Goddard there, but instead I took Pickett. Well, Goddard didn't make it back to me. I wanted to take Goddard in the cousin spot, but I needed the quarterback. Right. I took Pickett because, A, I feel like ranking-wise, he kind of fits right in there, and B... I kind of like if I if I get stuck with being like, hey, this team's pretty good, but I need another running back. Like pick it, and then the commit pick again down here. If he if he starts hitting, is in that same vein of what I was talking about of having a quarterback three and a tight end that maybe movable I could pieces. leverage movable, for movable a pieces. running back because I took Kareem Hunt after those guys, and I'm fine with him being my RB two as long as he's healthy. All he did sure. last year was. Do well, work as you've seen me leave one of these mock drafts with six quarterbacks. Yeah. So I, you, you, and I almost said it a minute ago when you were talking about something else. I mean, Mariota's on the board here. I'll take him if he comes sure. back to me. You can't, you're talking about, you're not starting a lineup. This, you know, this is your startup. You're not, the week one isn't next week. Um, and even if it was, you got to do what you got to do. I, I'll give up a, 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 I'll start a quote unquote bad player in my RB two spot or my wide receiver four spot. If I had to, to make my team better for the next five years, I'll do what I got to do for a week or two in the pre in the regular season. But you can't, 
just assume even like I consider myself a high end trader. Mm -hmm. Like I can make a trade happen. Sure. One way or another, just, I will come out the guy. I will offer you Spend a, enough time. I've, I've got my time in. I got my 10,000 yeah. hours logged. <laughs> I, can, I can send you a trade that is acceptable from the get go. A lot of people think that I'm a, um, you know, I'm sending bad trade offers because I talk about some trades that I made here, here and there, especially with the Patreon people. And I talk about some FNPC stuff. I will send trades that get accepted right away because I've, I have less time and I want to send you a good trade offer. But you cannot assume that the 11 other players in your league will let you make right. a trade. Right. And sometimes you're like, grind, you're like, I can't believe that I can't get ABC for this player. I can't get at least this value for this player. So I just wanted to point that, you know, obviously, yeah. you know, every, every league is different. We say that every year. We say it about 45 times every year. You don't know if you're actually going to be able to make your trades or not. You, I'm not – don't get the James – I'm not saying draft James Conner right there. But just you can't just you, – you can't draft six quarterbacks in a quarterback in a super flex league and just assume you're going to be a trade. I'm right, like, I did. Right, right, you know, right. Don't look at my team construction right. and think it's always going to work out because I'm – you know, I think I can make it happen. But sometimes it just – you just can't I've get seen that done masterfully. It was crazy. It was a startup. The, one of the first dynasty leagues they did like on on my fantasy league. Guy took five quarterbacks in the startup, and like six months later, had like six first round picks. Yeah. Just because it was a fourteen team super flex league, and well, that's yeah, also you know people understood real. Once quick, you get past twelve uh, men in the league, it changes everything. Changes everything quarterback yeah. wise. It's yeah. already a struggle to have two for every team. And at twelve, you're probably okay, but the third one gets dicey. Fourteen, sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. So you got a stranglehold on those things. And I, you know, I like your team build, Matt. Um, so I, I don't so love the Mills as your second quarterback. No, I don't either. I was going back and forth between Mills and Winston, but um, I just kind of took a dart throw on Mills there. I think he's a, a bit of an underrated asset, but I think he's another player where. I would have made sure you have Matt Ryan on this team. Yeah, I going back on it, that would have been a great that would have been mm -hmm. a great quarterback too. So and I know you're a golf. You like throwing golf on the bottom of a roster. So yeah. I don't know if, if I wouldn't have picked for Big Co there at twelve two if he would have made it to you or not. But, <laughs> Maybe. Um, yeah, and even even Wentz possibly, but I took Wentz's. I took Hal in in this in this fifteenth round. So. Um, yeah, I mean, so basically what I did here is I took a bunch of running backs early and then I started taking some 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 dart I wouldn't say dart throws, some guys that I thought were some high upside picks with Ayuk, Pickens, Alec Pierce with my love the value on Ayuk right now. Yeah. Hugely underrated. Um and then I just took some running backs later that I that I thought could pop later Get with some opportunity. And Zabir White. Those were guys that when I was looking at hurting at running backs, I started seeing Algiers and the Whites and the Robinsons and the Pennies and being like, All right, Mel go. You know, okay, I can make this work down the line here. Um, Pat Fryermuth, I, I looked at the DLF ADP. It's like 106, 107, 108, or, or 107, 108, 109. Uh, Schultz, Goddard, Fryermuth. Right on top. R right on top of each other, right in there. So, yeah, and that was, you know, in the 100, 107 range. So, okay. You know, we, you're right there. And Casey took Schultz. So if he doesn't take Schultz here, maybe Schultz goes another round back. Who knows? Right. You know. Um, real quick, has how much has Amari Cooper soured for you? For I didn't even think about him, honestly. Because I'm happy to get him at, at – he sours a lot more if Deshaun Watson's not playing. Well, yeah, that's what, kind of what I was implying. If there's a year of no Deshaun Watson, Cooper's not nearly. He was he was pretty fun there for a minute. Now it doesn't seem that fun. Um, any I, any other team builds you want to? I, I think we talked a little Megatron there, and I, I like I like what he was doing that Tom Brady pick. Sort of warranted with the build that he has going on there. I don't love it, um, but I like the receivers. I feel like Bateman's ADP still hasn't probably caught up to. Maybe he should be bumped up a little higher. Then you start looking at other guys and go, how can you take him over those guys? But I think, think he's a pretty good player. And by proxy, there should just be plenty of floor built into him, yeah. I would assume. Like, I don't know, unless Devin Tiverney's that dude. <laughs> <laughs> we, already, we already figured out he's gained 15 pounds overnight. So yeah, and grew an inch. Um, I like this Las Fats team. Um you know, got some got some fun stuff going on there. The you got the Lenny in the seventh that you guys weren't digging. AJ Dillon's a guy that's like I feel like you're either gonna be you're thankful right. that you paid for this right now mm -hmm. at eight, or or that's just gonna you know stay around. Like he he's either gonna be up 
four or five rounds next year and be like, damn, AJ Dillon's awesome. Or you're going to be like, ah, that wasn't the most fun pick you, in the eighth round. Although, I mean, at that point, running back wise, you're going to be, you're going to be like, man, AJ Dillon is crushing it. Or you're going to be like, dude, I could have had Juju. Yeah. Cause or, if you pass on somebody like Juju to take a backup running back who, you know, cause I mean, Aaron Jones is no slouch. And if he stays around for two years and it, yeah, it could be a two headed monster, it, but it who, seems like it probably will be and I how think, that team's built currently. And I think and Aaron I, Jones is just going to crush receiving. Exactly. And, and, and Dylan too, they threw sure. it to Dylan plenty yeah. last year. And I think, and he showed well catching balls that were near, nowhere near his frame for a huge man. I feel like uh, Dylan's going to get some dump downs this year because they got no receivers. I, I, yeah. I like the Dylan pick. It's just, when you look around, you're like, yeah, if if because Aaron Jones is such a, a beast, if I can't, I, I'm 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 I gotta get me some juju yeah. first, something like, like that. This just could love, be love this Clyde Edwards. I, I love the crush. I love the juju. Round. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's the more I look at this, that's like, man, I gotta that Fats team. I could do without the Corral Willis pick in eleven and nine. I would I would have probably taken. Uh, you know, Matt Ryan or one of the, I'd take him one quarterback and, you know, just if I wanted Willis or Corral, take one of those guys, but probably not both. And then I gotcha. don't mind the rest of the team. Definitely would take, I could, I could get down with the, with the Willis. Yeah. I can get down with the Willis, just not the Corral. Might've been an auto there. He got audited once or twice. He was in the middle of cooking dinner. I think, I think if we do one of these next time, I think I want to pick at the turn at one twelve. Yeah. Yeah. And just see what ends up there and see if I can see if I can go with a, the, if I can get two quarterbacks to fall there. Yeah, that's I've done. I did that a couple of mocks with just a computer, and that's was sort of the the style I was going. Just see with if I there. can grab a, if I can get a. I mean, I don't really want to take Deshaun Watson from a morality standpoint, but at the at the end of the day, I mean, it's just like. Yeah, you didn't invite him over for Christmas, exactly. but it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm not asking him to I'm not asking him to hang out with my wife for an hour. Yeah, right. Um, so yeah, so I mean, I, 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 if I can grab two of those quarterbacks there at that one two. I'm feeling a lot better rather than taking a quarterback really early and then just I went basically punting, got QB yeah. two almost. Yeah. I don't mind the Jay Wayne build here. I mean, he's always gonna be elite quarterback heavy to start off, and then the Kittle and then ETN Dobbins and then just a sh- slew of wide receivers. And I pretty much like every wide receiver that he has there. He's got a kind of a mix of, of mixed bag of uh stylistic receivers. Right. It, if if my were not auto pick there would be a lot more quarterbacks on my team like casey said i want to have my quarterback two doesn't have to be trey lance it was doesn't have to be the best potential high upside guy i just want to have two enough early that my third i want to have a third quarterback that's good enough like i a couple years ago i said it like this it was like dalton or better and of course dalton as soon as i said that he flirt he <laughs> went straight off the map but like somebody like that i want that third quarterback that no matter what, he's a starter, like the Kirk Cousins. Basically, we're ca- – uh, uh, You would Cousins as your three quarterback three? I would love to have Cousins as my quarterback three so I can make a trade happen. I just said don't draft for trading, but in Superflex, if you can move a quarterback and your team not suffer – you're gonna be you're gonna be in a good spot. Yeah. And obviously you're that is based on when I say your team not suffer, of course if you can move a third quarterback that's good, you didn't draft some players. You gotta hit on who else you're drafting. Mm-hmm. And we're nobody ever gets it perfect. That's why we're sitting in this room and I could draft a bunch of quarterbacks and I could draft the the running backs tight ends and and, and receivers that I pick could be a mixed bag of good and not great. Well the reason the reason you draft the safe third quarterback, fourth quarterback is because there is some there's a lot more volatility year to year with the skill position players than the quarterbacks right so you're able to then target which guy you want that's doing well that you see could be instead of here to stay right yeah yeah and you know and it's just it's hard to look at a team that you didn't draft and and have any sure. uh, I'll, I'll after the first two picks like you said casey i don't have a lot of uh, you know, hold on that team. I I got thought process in Dak, and it wasn't sexy, but I had to do it. And then the Cooper Cup, who's going to help me win a championship? I would have had logical explanations for picks all the way through, but I don't. You gave me golf. Like my team would have quarterbacks on it, and then it would have a long, a pretty solid stretch of value wide receivers, and I'd be plugging in running backs as I go, and 
and hopefully in like having a team, Dalton Schultz would have been on my team. You know, that I can pretty much tell you what it would look like. <laughs> yeah, right. I love that that Jahan Dotson tenth rounder. I'm I'm starting. I'm what do you starting, think about tenth round Jahan Dotson? I'm in the start starting up? to get back on the Jahan Dotson. All right, team. all right. How, I don't understand how we just missed a great opportunity for it to be Johan Dotson. Johan like Dotson, Johan yeah, Santana I mean, back. Yeah. In, like I, I, Johan is great, and it actually is pretty cool when he roll it off the tongue. But Johan Dotson would have been uh, that soft J would have been so nice. We played against Johan Dotson's high school, uh, our high school. Nice. Where did he go to high school? Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Oh, did he go to Nazareth? Oh, I didn't know that. Yep, 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 yep. Not, not that I'm. He's much younger than I am, but and clearly. I mean, clearly. What do you clearly. mean? Look at this. If I shave, if I shave, I could be. You'd card me. <laughs> I would say for cigarettes, but you, they're the same age now. So, um, all right. Anything else before we go? Favorite pick, least favorite pick is, is, is Daniel Jones. Like there seems, seems to be some Ooh, fun. I love that. I didn't know if we'd get that far. I was going to say something earlier when you said something about the quarterback, the uh, head coach change, and Dayball coming in. Like thirteenth, that Daniel Jones would have definitely been on my team yeah he would have been there would have been a block of three or four quarterbacks back here in a row and Daniel jones would have been one of them Bigo, you're about uh three minutes from timing out here on the squawk oh i can jump i like i like i like grabbing baker uh in these in these drafts because i mean he's been fine it's just ever every for whatever reason the 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 course has turned against him i think he's going to get another shot i like late baker um i like i don't mind i don't hate taking the stab on uh, Watson or uh, Winston or Daniel Jones or Wentz. Uh, I love Wentz yeah. as a fourth, third quarterback. Yeah, I was really debating hard between got to get Matt Ryan, Mills and Winston. Feel good about golf. So there's some f- yeah. decent back end quarterbacks that I would, you know, yeah. like you said, you're you're gonna miss out. But I, I'm okay with probably grabbing two of those guys at some point throughout. I here. think I think had there not been a 90 second clock, I don't think I would have taken Mills. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind Mills 10, 11. Really, yeah. I like. You know, maybe he won't be the quarterback for the Texans, but I think he's probably show enough to get another opportunity somewhere. But I don't know. I don't know. Uh, anything else? I've, I've, I struggled. Uh, Komet, I took Komet over Fant, mostly because I felt a little bit better about the situation that he could be getting himself into tied to Justin Fields. Definitely. But I like I the player of Fant better. I love Fant. I can't believe yeah. I did that. But Fant, Fant was getting um, a lot of love today. He was yeah. apparently playing well in camp. He's great. I mean, but I, I think Komet could be. The lack of receivers in Chicago and Fields come. Yeah. I yeah. And the lack I of quarterback in, in, De- <laughs> yeah. in Denver. And uh, he's still got an orange jersey on. In <laughs> um, Seattle is, is, you know, obviously scaring plenty of people off of Fant. Sure. Um, so. All right. Well, we appreciate everything. Thanks for joining us. Subscribe, comment below, uh, like, tell us what you like, what you didn't like, uh, all that good jazz. You can go to revelrybrewingco.com and pick up a T-shirt to support your boys. You can go to patreon.com to support your boys. We got Patreon members sending us gifts. There's there's no amount of thank yous in the world uh, that we can sh- uh, throw to Big D, but Dude, we will continue to throw roses at back your there. feet. Uh, it's pretty sick. So cool, man. Uh, good to have uh, Big Co and Matt back in here talking. No Jay Wayne today. He was doing more editing on that industry mock. So so you guys can, you know, you guys were already greedy, upset that there was the second one wasn't ready to go. Uh, <laughs> we did. Jason just you know, got turned out by fish this past weekend. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard that song Fancy by Reba McIntyre, but that was basically Jason. <laughs> 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 Uh, All right. Appreciate y'all. We'll catch you next time.